hello everyone in this video i will explain how to extract the records incrementally from salesforce object so i have already connected to iss data integration let me create a mapping click on create provide a mapping name M underscore SFDC account incremental and click on source provide the connection name select the SFDC connection then select the Salesforce object in this case I will select the, the object which I have created Uh, there are many objects present in salesforce i know the object name i will search that using a wildcard search as i know the object name starts with test i'll use test underscore then search find test underscore account select this go to query option two ways you can extract the records incrementally or you can do incremental extraction either you use that filter here or in this soql filter condition sales force object query language you can use that uh, that inbuilt variable this time i'll use the filter here Let me connect to Salesforce test underscore. Test underscore account. Select the fields query. You can see there are five records already present. For incremental extraction, what I will do, I will use this last modified dead field. And uh, in the mapping, I will use the inbuilt variable. Select the object, select the field, last modified date. Use this filter greater than equal to. Here I will use the variable. So last run time. The last run time is an inbuilt variable. Click OK. So it means what will happen? Any records which are greater than the last run time value will be uh, filtered out and loaded. So uh, for the first time, it will be blank. So all records will be extracted uh, during uh, second time onwards. Any records which are updated after the last run time will be extracted. Click on OK. Now save. It's invalid as we have not updated or added the target here. Click on connection. In my case, I will use flat file. Select. I will select the create new at runtime. Means whenever the job runs, the file will be generated. Make it as uh, TGT flat file test underscore account dot CSV. So 
so tgt salesforce to flat file test account csv click on okay now save the mapping so the variable whatever we have used that is uh, means uh, it's stored in timestamp it's stored in uh, gmt timestamp so as in salesforce uh, the default um, timestamp is in gmt so you don't have to modify or uh, convert the timestamp so gmt to ist or gmt to any other uh, time zone now i will create one mapping task Click on new mapping task. Provide a name. Let's make it MT underscore the mapping name. Okay, I have to provide the runtime environment. Click on next. Finish. So our mapping and mapping task both are ready. And go to Salesforce. You can see there are five records present already. So once we run the job, five records will be loaded to the flat file. Now run the mapping task. Click on my jobs. You can see the job is starting now. Let's wait for a few seconds. The mapping is still running. The mapping is succeeded. You can click on this instance name. As you can see, there are five records in the source object, and five records have been loaded during first run. Now go to the target location and see the file. As you can see, we provided the file name as DGT SFDC flat file test account. Click on it. Yes, as you can see, five fields have been five sorry five records have been loaded in the flat file. And as I have selected all, all fields, so all fields have been populated to the file. Now close the file. Let's go to workbench. As we know, there are five records. Now what I will do, I will update one record. So there are a few ways to update. Either go to the ID field. Let's go here. Scroll the cursor to the ID value. If you can see here, update, delete, undelete, pause, view in Salesforce. Either you click on update and update the value or view in Salesforce. Right click on this view in Salesforce so that it will be opened in another window. So this is the record present in Salesforce. And, um, click on edit. What I will do now. There is the address value is ABCD layout. I'll make it uh, ABCD EF layout and save it. You can see it was 256 or something previously, now 310. Let's go to workbench, run the query. You can see for this record, the last modified timestamp was 936. Let's query it again. After modification, it became 1010. Previously, it was 936. Now it is 1010. So all these are in GMT, and our that uh, variable is stored in uh, GMT. Now uh, let's run the job again. We can run it from here also. Mapping task is running now. Now 
you can see it shows one rows processed it's because we updated one rows so the updated uh, last modified timestamp is greater than the last run date so it satisfies our one record that's why only one record has been extracted from source and loaded to the target let's go to target double click on this as you can see the timing is uh, 1542 it means the file has been generated now only you can see one record has been loaded this is the incremental record similarly if you insert any or more records you modify any record or insert any records those records will be extracted incrementally so in this way the incremental load works using the inbuilt variable another way is you can use that inside the sql query this time we have used uh, in query options added the filter if you have any query which you want to use like uh, some specific fields you can use all those select column a column b column c from the object where uh, last modified time term greater than equal to uh, dollar last run time so in this way the incremental extraction works specific for uh, sales for subject if you have any other tables or other uh, databases which timestamp is different then you have to use the logic to convert the time zone to uh, gmt thank you